And welcome to another episode. You know, according to a recent survey, 70% of people with trouble sleeping, they're desperate to improve their sleep and daytime functioning to get better. So to understand the hidden toll of insomnia, I have Dr. Charlene Gamaldo, the Professor of Neurology at John Hopkins University. She's a board-certified sleep specialist who also has a board certification in neurology. Now, Dr. Gamaldo is the medical director of the John Hopkins Center for Sleep and Wellness. She's a professor in the Department of Neurology and vice chair of faculty development of neurology at John Hopkins Medicine. And she's also a provost a fellow at John Hopkins University and serves on the editorial board of neurology today and on the board of directors for the American Academy of Neurology. By gee, she's no dummy, is she? Welcome, Doc. Thank you for having me. Well, look, you know, uh, boy, as the prevalence of insomnia continues to rise, I guess the American public is thinking about sleep now more than ever before because, I mean, approximately 25 million adults, that's huge in the U.S., uh, with insomnia, trouble sleeping, you know, it's a lot more than just tossing and turning at night. So what on earth is going on? Uh, you, you got it. Um, you know, we did a Wake Up America survey, and it was um, really through the brainchild of um, the Alliance for Sleep, which is a group I'm really proud to be a part of. That is a consortium of sleep experts in the field of sleep research, education, and clinical care, where we wanted to get a better appreciation of what the insomnia sufferer was experiencing, what have been some of the barriers to um, getting treated, and also um, what's been the experience of, for some of our first-line healthcare providers who are often the, the first uh, group of providers to you know, deal with it sleep complaints within our, our health, our patient population. And what I, as somebody who's been practicing sleep for 20 plus years, what I was really struck by with the survey um, was not that, you know, sleep impacts folks' daytime functioning, because we knew that as part of insomnia, right? That's part of the diagnostic criteria, is that you have to have problems with initiating, maintaining sleep, Poor sleep, and it's associated with um, issues with how you function during the day. That was a given. What was not a given and eye-opening to me, excuse the pun, was the gravity of the impact mm. that um, our insomnia sufferers um, endorsed in this survey. And that, as you mentioned, 70% are desperate to get um, more education and more help. And they're spending quite a bit of money to do that. Um, you know, $7.1 billion a year on sleep products mm. and on average $325 per person for, yeah. you know, yeah. products just to help. So this is, you know, this is serious and, and people are actually putting their money where their mouth is in terms of, you know, a need. But I would say um, that, Mark, what really struck me, if I can tell you in terms of the the data with the gravity is that 19% of the um, respondents said that their poor sleep was the result resulted in a loss of a significant relationship. Yeah. <laughs> and well. that, um, I mean, you know, I mean, it doesn't get um, uh, more impactful than that. And then, you know, second to that, almost a third said that their financial struggles they um, directly link to issues with their sleep. So that's what I learned, wow. you, you know, being in this business this long, or not this business, but this uh, field of medicine for this long, that I didn't appreciate how much and to the degree that um, folks are suffering and how it's impacting their life. It's very sad and, you know, dangerous. I mean, employed people with insomnia, they, they lose an average apparently of eight hours uh, of work a week due to their troubled sleeping. Uh, Dollar-wise, $6.55 billion. That's hours, not dollars, I'm sorry. That's total across the country, millions of hours. And 66% of primary care physicians, apparently, they say that frequently, you know, they ask about sleep, but only 27% report their doctor always asks about sleep. So the docs have got to do a little more too, by the sounds of things. 
Um, yes, and you know, you bring up a, a good point on another thing that was um, insightful for us in the survey is that both the healthcare providers that we, um, you know, that we surveyed, and this was general practitioners and psychiatrists, plus about a thousand um, adults. And so this was the largest, one of the largest surveys of its kind. And both recognized that sleep was important, that sleep should be a pillar of health. But there was a disconnect <laughs> um, in terms of how much sleep was actually discussed or covered within the um, healthcare encounter. So um, part of what we recognized as an area for um, attention is how can we open the lines of communication so everybody's on the same page um, that, you know, the healthcare providers who, you know, have to cover a lot of things in a very small amount of time, how we can help guide them in ways to do it in a very targeted way, but also um, provide, provide in a way that the, their patients feel that their voices are heard. So um, that, that was something that really struck us and is, is one of the number one things that we're hoping to achieve with this mission. Well, Dr. Gamaldi, I tell you, you know, what came out of the stats I was looking at, this, this is frightening, and it's also very unfair. You know, we hear about all of the divorces in America, 13% experiencing the end of a relationship due to the problem with not sleeping. That's sad. It, it really is. And, you know, this points out that insomnia, it's, it impacts not just the patient, but every, you know, everyone around them, you know, significant relationships around them, whether it's personal relationships or it's their relationships and, and their ability to function at work. So as you mentioned, you know, um, this loss of a relationship can, i.e. translate to, you know, the end of a marriage, but also um, sleep can impact your, not just your ability to get to work <laughs> um, and be uh, a, and absenteeism, but it also can affect presenteeism. So that's even when you do get to work, can you function and perform at your best? Yeah. So, you know, yeah. it, you know, it's, it's hitting all the way around, much less, you know, your ability to be awake and alert driving to work. <laughs> well, so, um, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. See, right. At, at every, at every turn, um, this can have an impact. My word. And, you know, I stay awake all night to go to work, to sleep, you know. How do you know, doctor, if it is just a bad night's sleep or, you know, something more serious like insomnia? Great question. And, um, you know, the good news is that it's not a fancy test. You don't need to, you know, hook up to a machine or anything else. It's strictly a clinical criteria. And that clinical criteria can help determine whether this is just a one-off um, bad night every now and again sleep, which we all have, versus insomnia as a medical condition. And it's very simple. It's in terms of a checklist. And the checklist is this, that A, if the individual is having problems either initiating or maintaining sleep, and that's usually a third, within a 30-minute window, if it takes more than that, that's the difficulty. And it's associated with um, poor feeling rested and restored in the day and in your impact on daytime functioning. Mm -hmm. If that is going on, check. The next check is if it's going on for more than three times a week, check. And if it's happening more than three times a week for over three months, check. If all of those boxes are checked, that's now insomnia as a medical condition. It's not a one-off. It's not something to blow off. And it's worth it and you owe yourself <laughs> yeah. and your health um, the moment to go and consult with a medical provider to discuss how um, it can be evaluated further and how it can be treated. Well, Dr. Charlene Gamelda, I tell you, you've opened my eyes and I hope you've opened a few eyes of my listeners, but... You know, now that they are open, folks, how about you go to the website and read a lot more? Grab that cup of joe, even in your pajamas, www.wakeupamericasurvey.com. Is that the correct website, doctor? You got it. Wakeupamericasurvey.com. Check fabulous. it out. Absolutely fabulous. And thank you so much for the information. Appreciate your time. Know you're very busy. Have thank a wonderful you.
Thank you, Mark. Have a good day. Thank you. And you too.